We're back with another rule scenario involving Siwoo Kim yet again. That's back-to-back -back weekends. If you missed the last one about him breaking his putter at the Masters, be sure to check that out. Link's in the description. This time we're going to Harbor Town for the RBC Heritage that took place this past weekend. Kim puts his ball. It hangs on the lip for quite some time before eventually dropping in the cup. A conversation with the rules official ensues and he was ultimately assessed a one-stroke penalty, which caused quite some stir and raised many questions on social media. So in this video, we're gonna roll the footage and I'm gonna do a play-by-play -play with some commentary to break down exactly how this rule applies. Let's roll it. So here we are, Kim is putting for birdie from behind the green. He makes an incredible putt that looks good the entire way until the last possible millisecond, it loses steam it trickles to the left and it parks itself right on the lip. Kim is astonished as we all would be if this happened to us. And with the ball now overhanging the lip of the hole, we need to look at rule 13.3, which is called ball overhanging hole. Now the first part of this rule says that when the ball is overhanging the hole, the player has a reasonable amount of time to get to the hole. And I wanna stop right here and break this part down because it has raised some questions. A reasonable amount of time is not defined, so it can seem ambiguous, but that's because there's just too much variance between circumstances for when a player can actually reach the hole. Because a ball can be overhanging the hole, not only from a putt from 20 feet away, but also from a shot played from the fairway 150 yards out. So first of all, it's obviously gonna take the player from the fairway a whole lot longer to get to the hole. And secondly, the player in the fairway may have factors out of their control that prevent them from getting to the hole, such as waiting for other players to hit their shot or even helping another player look for their ball. So it's just not feasible or practical to put the player on the clock in this instance, which is why there's not a defined time. It's honestly just one of those rare situations when you know someone's being unreasonable when you see it. In this case, Kim was certainly reasonable with his time. He had a brief emotional reaction, which is perfectly okay, but then promptly made his way to the hole. It goes on to say that once the player reaches the hole within a reasonable amount of time, the player has 10 seconds that they're allowed to wait to see if the ball will drop or not. So they start waiting and waiting and waiting. Now, I don't think this is a situation in which Kim and Kucher were unaware of this ruling, but they are looking at something specific here, which I will cover in just a moment. But in the meantime, for any shadow theorists out there, if you wanna put your shadow on the ball because you think it'll help it drop into the cup, that's okay, it's not against the rules. Then finally, roughly 55 seconds later, the ball drops into the cup. Everyone's excited, but they know it's an unusual situation, so they call a rules official over to double check the rules. Official then explains that because the ball fell into the cup after that 10 second waiting period, the ball was deemed to be at rest while on the lip. And the ball actually falling into the hole counts as one stroke. And this is simply applied as a penalty stroke since Kim didn't physically tap the ball in. So Kim ultimately makes par instead of birdie. Now Kim and Kucher's reason for why they waited so long was because they claimed that the ball was moving the entire time it was on the lip. And they didn't want to make a stroke at a moving ball because as we all know from Phil Mickelson in the last US Open, it's a two stroke penalty for hitting a ball in motion. The rules official then explains that this is a modified rule. And this again caused some confusion. The rule is modified in the sense that when playing other shots on the course, it's quite possible and even frequent that the ball takes longer than 10 seconds before it comes to rest. We see this all the time on tour when players hit their tee shots on those hard and fast fairways. We as spectators literally watch the ball roll out 50 to 80 yards, which takes longer than 10 seconds. Even this putt made by Jason Day took a whopping 16 seconds to reach the hole. But the rules don't put these shots on the clock and deem the ball at rest once 10 seconds is reached, but they do when the ball is overhanging the hole. And the rules have to draw a line here because otherwise every time a ball is hanging on the lip, players would wait way too long for that gust of wind that never comes. And we have to keep play moving. And that is why this rule is considered modified. So at the end of the day, it's an unfortunate situation for Kim, but I think this ruling is pretty clear and straightforward and the rules official was spot on. So I hope you found this explanation helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up and click subscribe. If you have any questions about this ruling, just drop a comment down below. I'll get right back to you. But until next time, just remember, if your ball is hanging on the hole, you've got 10 seconds after you reach the hole that you're allowed to wait. The ball doesn't drop, it's at rest, it sucks, but you're gonna add an extra stroke.